Greetings. Greetings, my new friends, my sisters and brothers in Christ in the Episcopal Diocese of Oklahoma. This, my first convention address as your bishop, is not what any of us expected. But why should this be different from anything else this year? In this COVID tide, nothing has been as we expected for any of us. Still, it is so good to be with you all, even virtually, and to share with you a few thoughts about my ministry so far as your bishop and how we might walk together following our Savior in the days ahead. I don't believe in coincidences. Or rather, I found again and again in my life and ministry that what looks like coincidence is often the Holy Spirit's nudge in a particular direction or something God really wants me to hear. So it has been with this rich phrase from the book of Esther, for such a time as this. Some weeks before my consecration, I was meeting with a group to begin planning this convention. They'd asked me to bring in some possible themes. I presented a few, but said that the one that had really been on my heart and mind lately was this wonderful quote from the book of Esther. When Mordecai is urging Esther to stand bravely and use her influence with the king to save her people from destruction. Mordecai says, who knows, perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. We agreed that this would be the theme for this year's convention, for such a time as this. And then a few weeks later, at my consecration on May 30th, Father Tim Baer in his sermon also chose this phrase without knowing it had been selected as the theme for convention. And this weekend, today, as we have heard, my friend Bishop Carly Hughes of Newark, our guest preacher at our convention Eucharist, has also reflected on what this phrase has meant for her and her diocese. None of this is a coincidence. We have indeed been called to ministry together in Oklahoma for such a time as this. This pandemic, this bitter and divided election season, this period of difficult reckoning about racial injustice are all the time and place to which God has called us to love God and our neighbor fiercely with all our mind, soul, and strength. We are here, you and me, for just such a time as this. We have God-given gifts to offer our hurting world compassion, beauty, prayer, thoughtfulness, a hunger for justice, and a gracious approach to difference. God has placed us here for a reason. My friends, I have to tell you, even with the various challenges and changes of plans, I could not be happier to be your bishop. My family and I are feeling warmly welcomed and already at home here in Oklahoma. And I have to tell you, I am loving, loving what I am doing. Especially since I began visiting our smaller congregations in early September, 
feeling like that was the safest way to begin official visits in this pandemic, I have absolutely loved being with you. Learning each congregation's history and the impact you are having on your communities. Hearing about your challenges and your dreams. Doing meet and greets and Q and A's, socially distanced receptions and drive through blessings. Nothing feeds my spirit more. Nothing energizes me more than being out of the office with you where you are, with my crozier as my walking stick. I am so very proud of the incredible life-saving and life-giving ministries happening through our congregations and our institutions. We have embraced technology in ways unimaginable a year ago. And we have reached out to the most vulnerable with good old fashioned pastoral care, phone calls and porch visits, blessing boxes and supply drives. One critical way that we have looked out for the vulnerable closest to us has been holding diligently to our COVID protocols and adapting them as we learned more. Wearing masks, socially distancing, gathering outside, disinfecting, and avoiding or altering activities that put others at risk. We have had COVID positive members in our congregations, but have had no cases of transmission in church gatherings to the best of my knowledge. That is remarkable. Our Episcopal schools, senior living centers and camp and conference center have done an incredible job with their COVID protocols as well at considerable expense. Let's keep up our diligence with these protocols, remembering that they are less for ourselves than for others. When I wear my mask and keep my distance and wash my hands, I am loving my neighbor. And now let me share some thoughts about the year ahead in ministry in the Episcopal Diocese of Oklahoma and some of my goals as your bishop. First, we will continue to respond flexibly and faithfully to the COVID pandemic. It is obvious that our largest challenge this next year will continue to be our response to this pandemic in our diocese. I hope to continue to leave decisions about in-person gatherings to our congregations and our institutions, believing that each context is different. Though I reserve the right to issue, issue broader closures for safety reasons if I must. But that will always be a last resort because I trust our clergy and lay leaders to make the safest and best decisions for your own environment in this pandemic. God has placed us here for such a time as this. And we will respond not with a spirit of fear, but of faith trusting that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. As Jesus did, we will prioritize the vulnerable among us in all that we do. Second, we will continue to expand our use of technology to keep us connected and reach out with the good news of Jesus. As we await a vaccine, 
We will continue to offer the expertise of Sarah Smith and other members of the diocesan staff to help congregations offer robust streaming and other online worship gatherings and formation. The embrace of technology in even our smallest congregations to allow folks to worship, pray, meet, and connect has been nothing short of inspiring. And what we are learning will serve us well in the future as we continue to be digital disciples and evangelists, expanding the circle of God's embrace by including more and more people who cannot be there in person. Some of our congregations have even gained new out-of-state members through their use of technology. That is wonderful. We are here for such a time as this. And these new tools in our ministry toolkit, Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, websites, and more, will serve us well in the years to come, especially as we reach out to the next generation. Third, we will prioritize robust financial support for our congregations while continuing the diocesan priorities that we hold dear. We were fortunate that the financial impact of the pandemic on our congregations and institutions in 2020, though significant, has not been as devastating as it might have been. The PPP loan program that we applied for and received from the federal government, an effort that has taken countless hours from our amazing Canon Will Buchanan and his finance team on the diocesan staff and others, gave our congregations and institutions a much needed infusion of cash at a critical time. And many faithful Episcopalians in our diocese have kept current with or even increased their congregational giving to help sustain their vital ministries on the local level. Our shared diocesan funds were able to provide a backstop for St. Crispin's that has had understandably very few bookings since February due to the pandemic. But we expect greater financial challenges in 2021 across our diocese as the pandemic's economic effects continue and perhaps worsen. We have, as we have seen already today, a lean, prudent diocesan budget for 2021 that reflects this likelihood. We will hold our expenses down, trimming our diocesan staff a bit with two already planned retirements and not giving cost of living increases. I am pleased that our 2021 diocesan budget includes a further reduction of our mutual ministry support asking of our congregations, down an additional half a percent to 15.5% of operating revenue. This continued reduction means more financial resources kept on the local parish level for vital ministry. At the same time that our mutual ministry support asking from congregations is decreasing, this budget provides $1.2 million in direct financial support for congregations, especially our missions, one of the largest such amounts in the Episcopal Church. Canon Will, Canon Eric and I are meeting with all 35 of our aided congregations. And it has been encouraging for me to learn about the ministries happening in even our small congregations across our diocese. As I hope you are seeing in these meetings and in my Episcopal visits, all our congregations will find in me 
a willing partner and enthusiastic advocate, bringing my energy and that of the diocesan staff alongside you to foster healthy, sustainable communities of faith that make disciples and reach out to their neighbors. Fourth, we will focus on leadership development for 21st century ministry. My friends, Oklahoma needs three times as many bivocational priests as we have currently. And we need a permanent deacon in every congregation. We will offer more lay leadership training through our Iona School. And I'm thrilled to announce the launch of a new training program for spiritual directors, clergy and lay, led by Canon Susan Joplin. Imagine if every congregation of any size had in addition to priestly leadership, a permanent deacon, lay leaders trained in congregational growth and vitality, and a certified spiritual director to encourage prayer, plan retreats, lead discernment, and nurture the spiritual lives of individuals and groups. Canon Eric Cooter, who started this summer as Canon to the Ordinary, was my first hire as bishop. And he has been such a blessing and support to me and to our diocese. He has been evangelizing about the Diocese of Oklahoma, recruiting diverse, wonderful clergy from around the country for our openings. He and I are working closely together to add to our already talented and dedicated clergy, not only by recruitment, but by working with others on our ordination process to ensure that we are identifying and training the kinds of ordained leaders we need for congregational vitality in our increasingly secular culture. Even as we walk into brisk cultural headwinds, I believe we in the Diocese of Oklahoma can be an example to the wider church of congregational vitality, Latino and Native American ministry, genuine partnership of the bishop and diocesan staff with congregations, and a healthy mixture of tradition and outside of the box innovation. And fifth, and last of all, we will build partnerships. Episcopalians are a tiny portion of the religious marketplace in Oklahoma, about 1%. We need more partnerships among congregations, sharing staff, programs, outreach, and facilities partnerships between denominations, with businesses, nonprofits, and civic groups. I was honored recently to meet with the Reverend Dr. Robert Turner, pastor of Historic Vernon AME Church, the only black-owned building to survive the 1921 race massacre in Tulsa. We'll be revealing soon an exciting project in partnership with Dr. Turner and his congregation. When we work together, when we get out of our silos, we can do great things for the kingdom with God's help. Now, I've talked a lot about congregations today I want to be sure to offer my thanks and encouragement as well to our diocesan institutions. While I believe that congregations are 
at the center of a diocese, our institutions help us to extend our mission even further into our communities. Our remarkable Episcopal schools are close to my heart. I attended an Episcopal school, was a rector of one, and my children have attended Episcopal schools and are blessed to do so now at Cassidy. Our schools have done an amazing job balancing in-person and virtual learning while keeping students, teachers, and their administrations safe. Our two senior living centers have prioritized safety over revenue, offering compassionate care in this pandemic while keeping spirits high. They are serving our elders well, giving them the dignity and support they deserve. And our beloved St. Crispin's has found creative ways to welcome groups safely in the midst of building projects, no less. The new Ochre Hater Lodge is fantastic. And Joanne and Mike and their team are working hard on marketing plans so that we can invite and welcome many more guests, Episcopalians and others of all ages to that sacred place for conferences and for summer camp. And now a few final thoughts. To our lay folks, take good care of your clergy. They are tired in their bones. Some are depressed. They are doing things they never learned in seminary without doing many of the things they love most about ministry. When Ken and Eric and I and my family offered our clergy and other worship leaders a Sunday off on Labor Day weekend, recording a service for the whole diocese, I couldn't believe how positive the response was. Love your clergy. Make sure they take some time off. And remember, as Bishop Hughes said in her wonderful sermon, you, our lay people, are called. Called to ministry in our churches and even more so in the world as salt and light. To our clergy, Take good care of your lay folks. They may be too exhausted to show up for some of the amazing things that you are planning. That's okay. We are all doing our best. It's an honor, an absolute honor to be here with you as your bishop, as a servant to the servants of God as St. Gregory said. Let's remember to say our prayers every day. No one will remember a great class and very rarely a great sermon. But if we pray and teach people how to pray, that daily practice will change their lives. Prayer changes the world, and it changes us. Prayer and Bible study form disciples and strengthen us for service. To us all, find comfort and courage in the lives of the saints. The number of disciples is more important than the number of the crowd. Teach the faith to our children and do so most of all by our example. They are our future and our present. Keep fidelity to the core of the faith and make gracious space 
for differences with everything else. To the diocesan staff, you are an amazing, talented, dedicated group. I will try to keep up with you. To my family, especially Megan and my boys, I love you more than you know. Thanks for coming with me on this great adventure. Thanks to Bishop Ed for leaving me a diocese in great shape. Thank you for your wisdom and for your welcome. Thanks to all who have worked so hard to make this unique convention happen. I close with the words of St. Alcuin, his advice to Adelard, the new Archbishop of Canterbury in the eighth century. Words that I have found useful as I've been learning this new and very different ministry. Alcuin advises Adelard like this. Almighty God grant all go well with thee. Be an honor to the church. Follow Christ's word, clear in thy task and careful in thy speech. Be thine an open hand, a merry heart. Christ in thy mouth, live that all may know thee a lover of righteousness and compassion. Let none come to thee and go sad away. Hope of the poor and solace to the sad, go thou before God's people to God's realm that the one who follows thee may come to the stars. So living seeds, words that are quick with life, that faith may be the harvest in human hearts. In word and in example, let thy light shine in the dark like the morning star. Let not the wealth of the world nor its dominion flatter thee into silence as to truth, nor king, nor judge, yea, nor thy dearest friend muzzle thy lips from righteousness. Thank you, Episcopal Diocese of Oklahoma. And may God bless and keep us all in such a time as this.